Hello everyone. Welcome to the final module of DDRCS that is earthquake resistant design of structures. So this module is uh, the new introduction in this uh, semester for you. So in the previous uh, semester this module was not there. So this is a very important module as far as your exams are concerned. So one question of 16 marks is definitely is going to be expected from this module. So in this lecture we are going to see the numerical from this module. So I strongly recommend you to please uh, go through this module, study this module as it is very important as far as your exams are concerned. So in this lecture we'll see the numerical. For uh, the theory part I will uh, request you to please go through the module and first see the basic theory of this module and then you can go through this lecture for the numericals. So uh, let us start with the first numerical. So this is the basic type of the numerical which I will cover in this lecture. In the coming lectures I will cover the other types. So let us go through the question first. The plan and elevation of a three-story RCC school building is shown. The building is located in seismic zone 5. The type of the soil is medium stiff and it is proposed to design the building with special moment resisting frame. The intensity of the dead load is 12 kN per meter square and live load is 3 kN per meter square. Determine the design seismic loads on the structure. So basically in this uh, module the question the numericals which will be asked will be to determine the design seismic loads on the structure. So the data is given to us so let us see the given data first. So I have just drawn the figure the plan and the elevation which is given in the question. So the plan is uh, I'll just uh, point with the help of my pointer so you can see on the screen. So the plan is 4 by 4 so in x direction is 4 meter and y is also it is 4 meters and the elevation you can see the floor to floor height is 3.5 meters and first floors there are three floors first floor second floor and the roof floor. So the given data is seismic zone is 5 me, uh, soil uh, is medium stiff and the structure is special moment resisting frame the type of the structure which is given is special moment resisting frame and the dead load is this 12 and the live load is given to us so we have to find out the design seismic loads so in this the, the first step will be we will find out the calculation of the seismic weight of the structure so seismic weight on the roof so first we will find out the seismic weight on the roof. So seismic weight on the roof is given by seismic dead load plus seismic live load. So seismic dead load is given by the plan area, area into dead load. So this dead load is already given to us that is 12 kilonewton per meter square the area load. So the plan area is nothing but 8 into 8, 8 by 8 you can see the plan and the dead load is 12 and the seismic live load. So the live load considered on the roof is zero. This is as per IS 1893-2002 part 1 page 17 clause 7.3.2. So as far as this module is concerned you have to refer the IS code which is 1893-2002 part 1. So this condition is given in given on page number 17 clause 7.3.2. Seven so I have just mentioned the reference of the IS code wherever there is a uh, use of this clause. So in the exam the IS codes will be allowed. So you can use this reference and actually refer the IS codes for the various equations. So the live load is 0 for roof. So as per IS 1893 clause 7.3.2 page 17. So the live load which is taken on the roof is zero. So the clause number 7.3.2 states that for calculating the design seismic forces of the structure the imposed load on the, re on the roof need not be considered. So hence that is the reason we have not considered the live load on the roof. So the seismic weight on the roof comes out to be 768 kilonewton. 
so now coming to the second part that is seismic weight on the second floor so basically what we are trying to find out we are finding out the seismic weight of the entire structure so first we'll find out for the roof then the second floor and then the first floor so now the seismic weight on the second floor is given by again dead load plus live load so seismic dead load is area into dead load and seismic live load is again the plan area into live load so dead load and live load are already given to us in the question so plan area is 8, 8 into 8 into dead load is 12 and this again plan area is 8 into 8 and live load is given in the question as 3 so now here 3 into 0 0.25 so this 0 0.25 is nothing but we have taken 25 percentage of the live load again this is as per the IS code in table number 8 so as per the IS code it is mentioned that when the live load is less than or equal to 3 so we have to take 25 percentage of the live load and when it is greater than 3 then we have to consider 50 percentage of the live load so that is the reason we have taken multiplied this with 0 0.25 I hope this is clear now so seismic weight on the second floor is 816 kilonewton so now similarly seismic weight on the first floor will also be 816 kilonewton as we have found out the on the second floor so now total seismic weight on the structure will be your seismic weight on the first floor seismic weight on the second floor and seismic weight on the roof so that's what I have done I have just uh, done the summation of all the floors so which comes out to be 2400 kilonewton so now let us go to the second step so the first step was to find out the seismic weight on the structure total seismic weight now the second step is to calculate the time period so now ta that is time period is given by there are two formulas 0.075 h raised to 0.75 this formula will be considered when we are considering the structure without the brick infill panels without the brick walls and ta is given as 0.09 into h upon under root d when we are considering the brick wall so let us consider this structure with brick infill panels and let us find out the time period where h is the height of the building and d is the base dimension of the building so therefore ta is uh, total height will become 10.5 so here from the elevation you can see that this is 3.5 3.5 and 3.5 so total height will become 10.5 meters and the base dimension is nothing but if you see the plan so this is the base dimension so this is 8 in x direction also it is 8 and in y direction also it is 8 so so this d is nothing but the base dimension of the building so therefore the time period we got is 0 0.334 seconds so now you have to take care one thing here since the building is symmetrical in the plan ta is same in both the directions so since the building is symmetrical ta will be same if you have if it is unsymmetrical then you will get two values of time period in x direction and in y direction but in this case it is the same so now on the basis of this we will find out the ratio which is called as SA by G ratio so this is again given on page number 16 clause 6.4.5 so in this uh, it is given for rocky or hard soil for medium soil and for soft soil the value of SA by G is given to us so since our soil is medium stiff soil so we will consider for medium soil SA by G again it is uh, given for different uh, range of your time period so when your time period is greater than 0 0.1 and less than 0 0.4 so in this case our time period is greater than 0 0.1 and less than 0 0.4 the SA by G ratio will is nothing but 2.5 so hence we got this ratio as 2.5 so this IS code will be allowed in the examination so you can definitely refer and take the values so now let us go for the next step that is design of the base shear now this base shear is given by the equation AH into W where AH is nothing but the design horizontal seismic coefficient and W is the seismic weight of the building which we have already found out so what is remaining now we have to find out this AH that is design horizontal seismic coefficient so let us see how to find out AH so now AH is given by this equation Z by 2 into I by R into SA by G this is again given in clause 6.4.2 so in the clause 6.4.2 this equation is already given to us 
okay so where z is nothing but your zone factor so this zone factor you will get it from table 2 and i is nothing but your importance factor this you will get in table 6 page 18 and r is nothing but your response reduction factor this you will get from page 23 table number 7 so let us find out these values since we got the equation of h so first let us find out z so z is z is equal to 0 0.36 for zone 5 so if you see page number 16 you will see a table in which you have the values of z for different zones so since our zone is 5 for the, for zone 5 the respective value of z is 0 0.36 now similarly i is nothing but the importance factor so again this is given in page number 18 so let us see the importance factor so this factor depends upon the uh, uh, type of the structure so how important it is so for school buildings for hospitals generally the, imp uh, the importance factor is 1.5 again this is given in the table 6 of page 18 so hence we got the value of importance factor as 1.5 now r is equal to 5 this is given in page 23 table number 7 so r is nothing but your response reduction factor and this depends upon the type of the moment resisting frame which we are selecting for the design purpose so either we can select ordinary moment resisting frame or we can select special moment resisting frame so here in the question it is already given to us that the structure the type of the structure is special moment resisting frame hence for this type the response reduction factor taken is 5 so this is given again in table 7 page 23 so I have just mentioned all the references wherever you will find these details in the IS code. So now we got all the values unknown so we can find out the value of AH. So AH is nothing but Z by 2 into I by into SA by G we already got it as 2.5. So we got the value of the coefficient AH as 0 0.135. Now the design base shear is given by AH into total W. So total W also we got so VB the design base shear we got it as 324 kilonewton. So once we got the design base shear, the last step is to actually find out the distribution of the design lateral force. So let us see how to find out this. The design lateral force at different floor is given by the equation QI is equal to VB into WI into HI square upon summation of WI into HI square. So this equation again you can find this in the IS code on page number 24 clause 7.7.1 okay so this q is nothing but the design lateral force acting at the different floors of the structure so let us find out this value for different floors so let us first find out on the first floor so let us denote it as q1 q1 is given by vb into w1 so if you are considering q1 your w will become 1 and h will become and h is the height from the base floor so remember h is the height from the base to the first floor so this summation is the total summation of all the floors so w1 into h1 square plus w2 into h2 square plus w3 into h3 square so q1 is vb remains the same 324 kilonewton w1 is 816 so here i'll just show you what we got w1 means first floor w of the first floor is nothing but 816 kilonewton so you can see my pointer i have just pointed out this is first floor Floor that is 816 kilonewton. So that is what we have used here. W1 is 816 into H1. H1 means that is from the base to the first floor, the height is 3.5. So 3.5 square. And this summation is for the total of all the three floors. So for the first floor, that is W1, height is 3.5. So 816 into 3.5 square. For the second floor, again, the load is 816, but the height from the base to the second floor is 7 meters. So remember this 7 square plus the third that is the roof the load on the roof is 768 kilonewton and the height is 10.5 meters that is from the base to the roof it is 10.5 so this is how your w3 into 10.5 square came so you got the force on the first floor that is the load on the first floor as 24.05 kilonewton similarly you can find for the second floor i hope this equation is very much clear to you what does this summation of w I into hi square means it means it is summation for all the three forces with the respective h distance and h is measured from the base now for the second floor again vb remains the same 
and now for the second floor this will become w2 into h2 so w2 is how much 816 and h2 is how much from the base it is 7 meters so 7 square similarly the denominator will remain the same so we got the value of q2 as 96.21 kilonewton now for q3 vb remains the same and w3 will is changed that is load on the roof is 768 and the height will become total height from the base that is 10.5 square and the denominator will remain the same so we got q3 as 203.73 kilonewton so now we got the design lateral force at each floor so now we just have to represent the forces in the elevation so this is the elevation so on the first floor that is q1 second floor is q2 third floor is q3 so i've just mentioned the loads which is acting that is the lateral forces acting on the structure so on the first floor it is 24.05 the second floor 96.21 and q3 is 203 similarly if sometimes if it is asked in the exam to draw the shear diagram so you can draw the shear diagram also so at the base it is the maximum that is 324 so again at the first floor it is reduced by 24 so that means 299.95 and again on the second floor it is reduced by 96 so ultimately this value remains the same 203.75 so this was a typical problem, a basic problem on the uh, earthquake resistant design of structures. So I hope this is clear and I hope I have uh, mentioned all the references as far your uh, code is concerned, your IS code is concerned. So you can just refer and find out the equation and the values for that. So in the next lecture, we will start with a different type of the second type of the numerical. So thank you.